go. Okay. Glorious afternoon, angels. Welcome to Humanitarian Chronicles, where I feature extraordinary people doing extraordinary things. I am here today with Rabbi Yitzhak Schwartz, cowboy turned rabbi, Kabbalah teacher, meditation guide, spiritual coach, and community leader, especially in this tumultuous time. And I would say this in every incarnation because I'm sure that life gets tumultuous in every age. I felt that I needed to feature you today, Rabbi, because where are our shaman and our big kahunas and our rabbis and our pastors and our priests and our spiritual guides and our coaches? Where are they? Well, here they are. Here is one of them. Reb Yitzhak has inspired so many lives, specifically people that I know and love, which is why I wanted to feature you here today. Two of my favorite people on earth have gained so much insight and wisdom and strength in their lives because of your counseling and your beautiful teachings through meditation and music and heart and soul. And it is my optimum, ultimate honor to welcome you here today, Rabbi. So thank you so much for joining us to help shine some light in the world. Thank you. Thank you for helping me get the word out there. Thank you for your incredibly illustrious, glorious descriptions of a very simple Jew who's just a uh, trying to do what I do, you know, and just trying to get it out there in the best way I can. Hopefully, the more I, I sort of get myself out of the way, the more, the better off it, it, it gets out to the world. So Amen. Thanks, thanks for the opportunity. I appreciate that very much. Maybe we'll start since this is, this could turn into something very special, even beyond what we think it might turn into. We'll start with a little sort of meditative request or intention that may may the words of our hearts and the meditations of our minds be acceptable before God and find favor in the eyes and of all those who witness this and and may our what's coming out from our hearts go straight into their hearts and maybe open them up to a whole new way of thinking amen that is such a beautiful, beautiful intention. And this is why I have you here today, because this is truly who you are. You want people to manifest the best, and you want the best energy to be put forth into the world to elevate the world, elevate each individual soul and the world. And I will share my own personal story with you in that my Skype was rebooting for the past 20 minutes, so we were late on the call, and I was apologizing profusely. And you told me such a beautiful story and anecdote. And I just, I would love for you to share that because it's how you look at life and it's why you're such a powerful leader. I really appreciate it. Thanks for giving the opportunity. So, yeah, here's the story. I, I, I've been at an earlier stage of my life. I, as part of my, whatever you want to call it, my, my travels and my, my teachings, um, I was invited to the lovely island of Maui, Hawaii for about eight straight years. And one of those years, it was 2009, which is now about eight years ago. Um, I, we, I was on the way to Hawaii. You know, we had a stop in Berkeley, California. And I went in to go visit a bunch of cousins and I left all of my stuff in an SUV, SUV uh, van came back out. This apparently was a little bit of a crime uh, part, crime ridden part of the of Berkeley. Came back out. Somebody smashed the window shield of the of the thing. Took everything I owned, which I silly me left all of my stuff in there, including two passports, including the, the everything, the clothes on my everything. Oh my gosh. And I got a little bit traumatized, a little freaked out. But the first thing I did then was to call my rabbi, Rabbi Bracha, Rabbi Blessing, if you want to translate that. I love that. The name, his name, who he is, basically. And he said, without even thinking for a second, he said, must be, he told me, that you have a very important mission to take care of. And if, if, if the other side, so to speak, of reality has given you such a hard time by taking everything must be you you have something very important to accomplish just whatever do it however you can you can muster it you know and because you got you have an important mission you and i here abby have an important mission because uh 
your computer got had to get rebooted, and we we apparently have to start off. And uh, there's something real important we don't even know yet what's happening. It, that this session that you and I are doing is going to get out there to the world. Let the divine flow commence. Let Amen. The flow go. Rabbi, Let the that's flow flow. so amazing, and it is something that I absolutely love about Judaism and every ism that I've studied. It are the, the the stories and the deep meaning that it brings to life. I know that a lot of people are, especially nowadays, just down on you know doctrine and indoctrination and dogma and religion, organized religion, and you know I myself do define myself as more spiritual than religious as well. So. You know, in this time where people are running away from that kind of thing, it's so, I, I just love the meaning that, I, I take the good from everything and you do too. So anyway, that's, that's something that I love about these isms are the stories and the meaning and it's not woe is me, I'm a victim, but when we do reach for something higher and live with a higher purpose and God or, or your higher power, we can see these things even stealing away our luggage, our passports, everything we own can be a good sign when we look at life positively and from a higher, holier place. And I love that. Absolutely. I think the more that we look at life from that place, the more blessed life looks back at us, basically. I think to the, to the extent that you actually look that way, to the extent you're real with the fact that God has a guiding hand 24-7, and is, is, is taking you by the hand in a customized, personalized way and saying, Yitzhak, you're thinking that way because that's exactly what you got to think. You're seeing the, these people. You're seeing these challenges. You're, you're walking through the walls that you're walking through or into the walls you're walking through because that's the best possible thing for you, and I love you, and, and if you believe that, your life is going to be so incredibly alive 24-7. I think that's that's the ultimate purpose of it all. Wow. Basically. Yes. And you have a concept that I've heard you speak about because I've stalked you and listened to your uplifting <laughs> meditations and, and spiels and drashes and teachings. And you have this concept that you share with the world called paradising your life and right. living life with divine providence. And it, it's, right. that sounds like what you were just talking about. I'd love for you to elaborate about that. Sure, be happy to. And uh, let me just tell you, with stalkers like you, I think we all we'd all be in better shape. Yeah, oh. <laughs> the, world, the world is stalking us all the time. It's you not know, we... stopping. The stalking ain't stopping because I keep finding more magical meditations. Honestly, your meditations online are so healing and soothing and grounding for me. Just when I'm getting, even just now before this call, I was getting ready and and getting in the zone and I was listening to your meditations and it's not just you with an echo chamber it's you with a guitar playing beautiful heavenly music as you share these ancient teachings of the ages and it's so powerful and so beautiful and it they really go straight to my heart I mean I, I love music and I love wisdom so you've melded both and it's powerful I appreciate that so much. Yeah, I put everything. I think probably the my greatest efforts in the last ten or almost like fifteen years now has been to create on on a weekly basis and sometimes on a daily basis with people one on one to create what I call an MMM uh, uh, session, which is mystical musical meditations. Wow. Where I try to take the one theme. I have a theme I walk with all week. I try to laser beam that theme into my life and get get the feedback into my into myself and, and present that with with music, with poetry, with with Torah teaching, with heart filled, heart speak, soul speak, um, channeling I think with the people that are sitting there somehow or another feeding back to me that Yitzchak, whatever you said is exactly what I needed to say, which is the greatest compliment I can get. And it's 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 a party. I I, I do it every week for like fourteen years now for wow. two hours, and I I have not, I don't work. It's not work. It's 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 a party. It's a celebration because it's not me doing it. It's it's just a it's it's something coming through, 
and it's a wonderful thing. It, it's, it is an expression, just to tie it back to what you were just asking, of the, the, what I call the Paradise Principle. I, I have a website called www.paradiseprinciple.com, and the idea is to get us back to the garden, the whole, the, the Kabbalistic um, goal of humanity is to get back to the place in the Garden of Eden before we got kicked out of the Garden, before the fall from grace, the fall from the Garden, which was a fall that was due to not seeing things in a holistic enough way, not seeing things as a combination of maximum me-ing and maximum God-ing at the same time, maximum just completely expressing who I am and also at the same time completely meshing that with God expressing himself to me and through me and being being okay with both of them. See, Adam and Eve sort of had, they, they felt that, well, you weren't supposed to eat from this certain kind of tree, this certain kind of a consciousness, because that was going to turn, that was going to basically take them away from this garden thing. They said, well, I think God really wants us to, to do that, to sort of separate from him. And we've been trying to get back to the garden for, in Jewish year, Jewish creation years for 5,777 years now, trying to get back to the garden. And so Yitzhak Schwartz, humble me, is trying to get back to the garden as soon as possible and trying to live my life as a mesh of me and God and the two together as, as much as possible. That's my paradising. So I try to paradise my life with every every encounter, every every uh, challenge that I have, every relationship that I have. I try to be maximum me and maximum sacred, maximum sacred space of, of and find that and, and, and complete self-expression as much as possible. Oh, that That's is... That's a mouthful. That is a, a heartful. That is beautiful. A heartful. That is so <laughs> beautiful. You. And I, I relate with that so much. I mean, that is truly how I try to live my life. I, I love the concept of getting back to the garden. I mention it every day of my life because I'm vegan and I'm always talking about it, especially in Jewish circles. <laughs> I'm just like, homies, <laughs> we've got to get ourselves back to the garden. Why should we be living just because something was, was deemed okay by God doesn't mean it's deemed the highest level of living. And and so I love that you said that. Just because gossip is okay in our world because there's a thousand gossip magazines out there and it seems that, you know, the assimilated culture thinks that it's okay and it's the norm doesn't mean it's good, doesn't mean it's virtuous, doesn't mean it's holy, doesn't mean it's going to connect us more to God and make us happier. And by the way, everybody, what we're talking about here right now with Reb Yitzhak is what he does with his spiritual coaching one-on-one with people, what I was talking about with my friends who have experienced absolute magic and transformation from working with him. So um, I was saying that because uh, you, I know that you bring out, you try to bring out people's paradise within them in your coaching. So yes. Amen. Yes, let's get back to the garden. Let's live virtuously in every way, in every area of our lives so we can get back there. Well, how do you work with people to get them back to their own garden and connection with God? It's actually pretty simple, but it's it's pretty profound at the same time. I, I thank you for asking. I, I, what, what I do, basically, I do something I call rot zone counseling. So rot zone is, in Hebrew means will, primal will. And in Kabbalistic language, Ratzon, it, it, it is the highest of the spheres, the, the sphere of the sphere, like the, the chakras. It, it's the deep, not the highest only, but that's how it looks like in a linear basis, but it's the deepest. It's the one inside of us that when we connect into that primal will, everything else follows. The Red Sea opens. We um, my life, my divine providential life, the clearer that I know what I want and where I'm going and who I am and what my essence is, the, the, the Red Sea opens up for me and the, in my internal parts open up also. Every, everybody gets on board. Everybody is an assi- assists in the process. My right brain, my left brain, my 
emotions, my um, my get up and go, every, everything else wants to jump, join the team and, and, and make that happen. So I, I have people basically um, project uh, in a future time who they want to be wow. and what they want to accomplish and like a year from now and then step into that year from now and say, hey, you suck, I want to be and accomplish a, B, C, and D, and I, no, I, not that I want to, I, I already have accomplished this. And when they're standing in the future announcing that, so we believe as a, as a people that sort of God spoke the world into being. So the, the power of the word is that when you declare something, that plants a reality into the universe. Yes. When they're declaring, I'm going to be this, they're co-creating with God that reality, and then they say, "I am going. I am do. I've, I've already accomplished this. I'm happy to, to report to you. This is my graduation speech. I've already done this. Love that. And then we we come back to square one, and we start walking down a road that we've created that that person's graduation speech has created from now until that future time. Wow. We meet once a week. We we. We both, we brainstorm, because I got a lot of tools, as you can imagine, over the years from mm -hmm. working with all this kind of stuff. But also, more important than our brain, than us making it happen, is sort of us watching it unfold in front of us. We declared it. That person declared it. That's a co-creation. Yeah. We're now going to walk through, open our eyes, maybe take notes about the amazing things and highlights that are happening in that person's life, and we're going to watch how everything is unfolding to make that miracle happen and make that person live in paradise and, and live the that rot zone, that essence that they want to become. That's how we work together. That's, that's in a nutshell how we work together. That is so beautiful. That is so beautiful. And I love, I mean, it sounds very Louise L. Hay. It sounds very new agey, but it's really ancient agey. <laughs> oh, it's very, it's, the new it's agey stuff is, sure. is from the ancient. There's nothing new under the sun. Everything that, wow. I mean, yes, yeah, speak what is and then step into it with. And then step into it, yeah. Right. Real world tools, vision boarding. I don't know. I haven't worked with you. I don't know exactly what you tell people to do, but no, it sounds. Anything and everything goes. Anything yeah. goes. Like my, my main concern in working with people is that they are able to really do what they want. It's not about me. I'm not throwing any moral judgment or anything on them. I, my my whole goal is that they do what they want. And my my belief, my belief system, if you want to call it that, is that if we really connect to what we want and what our calling is, then our want is at one with God's want for us and when when we connect up when we make that circuit breaker when we connect up in that way nothing in the world can hold us back nothing stands in the way of, of Ratzon that's what our sages say nothing stands in the way of that kind of will when we, we're when our wills matched up with God's will we, we become like the like God's right hand arm we, we just things effortlessly happen for us at all times. Oh, I love that. I can't wait to manifest. Working with you. I'm speaking it in. All right. I mean, I am working with you. I just called it in, in present tense. I am working with you. That's all so right. beautiful. <laughs> and you know what, what it brings up for me is, yes, align our, our will with God's will. And that means daily actions because those are what build our character and what build our life. And something that's been on my heart lately is Lashon Hara, which is the evil tongue, which is gossip, because I, I just had a really damaging, painful experience in my own life uh, surrounding gossip from dear friends, you know, who I don't talk to anymore. <laughs> um, but um, I'll actually just share. But anyway, so if we align ourselves with God's will and work with you and do our vision boarding and call it into existence and walk down the yellow brick road or the red carpet, whatever path you roll out in front of you, depending on what goal you want at the end, whatever your path looks right. like, darling, for me, it'd be the red carpet, the green carpet, right. but, right. um, right. eco green, but it's like, if we're not living in alignment with God's will every day, it, I feel, and you can tell me if I'm right on the right track, it doesn't matter what our end 
desire is if we're not honest in our business dealings um, truthful with our words kind with our words um, doing good deeds out in the world every day if we're not living a virtuous life who who cares what our ultimate will is that's aligned with God how I mean does that make sense oh yeah that makes a lot of good sense I, I actually many about 15 years ago when that I don't, I don't know if people remember the the secret there was a movie and a, a movement and the whole and books <laughs> and interviews called the secret which was basically like saying announcing to the universe I'm gonna do this it's going to happen and the only the one thing I took issue with with that whole thing was that um, God is sort of like in, in in their world in their viewpoint the um, the universe or God or whatever they call that that higher power is sort of like a genie in in a bottle, and we sort of put God in the position of uh, 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 of saying to us your your wish is my command. Right. That that's the only thing I took issue with, and what I think you're bringing up very beautifully is that not necessarily. I mean, just who's who's running the show here? You know, of course, when we align our will. With with the world, with God's will, with and and we're everything is is in line. We we can make miracles. Miracles will unfold. For no question about it. But there are certain kinds of things we have to take into account. Which is, does this find favor in your eyes, God? My my, my Rabbi Bracha, who I talked about earlier, used to used to say, whenever you make a prayer, say, does this find favor in your? If it finds favor in your eyes, God. So it's like we humble ourselves. We we make ourselves a little humble. One of the law moral laws of the universe is that we want to be good to people. We want to show love to other people. And if we're bad talking to them, even if we're good talking to them, even if we're saying stuff which is true, but somehow they're going to get hurt by it, that's not a good thing. And that and whatever you want to call the karma is going to come back and sort of possibly bite us in, in, in that way. But when we're good talking to them, when we're focusing on saying good things about people at all times, mostly, uh, or at least not saying bad stuff about people, we're, what we're throwing out there into the world is good people energy. The world is a reflective mirroring place. That's what the great mystics of the Hasidic movement is not, uh, and the Baal Shem Tov taught us, and, and all the way back to King David, they taught us that the world is like a reflection mirror. You put good stuff out there. You think good, it's going to be good. You you be good to people, people are going to be good to you. When you're smiling, the whole world's smiling back at you. That's why we got to speak good things about people. That's so beautiful. Well, you know what I've also heard about Lashon Hara, the evil tongue or gossip, is that and you touched on it, is that even speaking good about people can be misconstrued. And it's it, there is an adage in the Torah that says, you know, um, small minds discuss people, great mind, you know, uh, average minds discuss events, great minds discuss ideas. So we oh, might we might as well always aspire. And then Eleanor Roosevelt, of course, uh, reworded it, and now everybody quotes Eleanor Roosevelt. But it is in the Torah. It's ancient. Every every beautiful, wise, new age teaching is ancient. But yeah, it's like, let's just, let's reach for higher. Let's reach for the garden. Why don't we just talk about ideas and visionary stuff and Torah and beautiful stories of, of any ancient, beautiful culture and tradition. It's so much more magical than talking about people or current events, which are all biased anyway and probably made up in the news. You know, that, um I don't know how much we want to get into the news right now, but I, I, I can't resist to say a word since it came up in the conversation. We're we're in a we're in a crisis of divisiveness right now. Probably the essence of that divisiveness, and I'm not I'm, I'm going to purposely be apolitical in, in what I'm going to present here. I'm not going to say I'm right or left or anything else like that. But but what's happening is that people use that lush and horror, that saying bad things about people, to try to control, gain the upper hand against the other side. And it, it's, it became so blatant and so obvious and so grotesque yeah. in the last year or so and that, that it got to the point that I think people don't even realize maybe that that's 
the source of the whole problem. Like, how do you talk about another person? Whoever that, whatever their opinion is, whatever, where they come from the right, they come from the left, they come from, you know, religious, not religious, whatever they're coming from. If, if you're saying, if you're bad mouthing them without any, any benefits to come out of that bad mouth or, or a benefit that's very selfish, that's going to come back and, and, and create a very, very negative kind of atmosphere in the world. It, it, to, to, that's the understatement of the year. It's, it's, it's going to cause, cause havoc, real havoc, like yes. we're seeing, like we're seeing. That's right. We reap so what we it, sow. So obvious simple solution or overly obscenely simple solution is talk good about other people well yes that's I mean honestly that's why I really do love and resonate with holy the holier in life like Orthodox Judaism my friends that are really religious Catholic you know it's like when we get together and my friends that are Hindu Buddhist when I get together with the, even my my um, very religious Muslim friends, when we all get together, when I get together with these people, we are talking about the stories of our heritage, the stories of our culture. Like, we're talking about uplifting, in, inspiring stories. It's like, and, and we all have this unsaid agreement that that's the way to interact in life. And the, whatever we focus on grows. So why do I want to even surround myself with friends who are talking low-level speech? And that's a judgment. But I'm going to, let's say... Small minds discuss people speech. Why, you know, yeah. I want whatever we focus on grows. We reap what we sow. Which wolf are we feeding? All those adages. But yeah, I mean, it's it's so wonderful. Like you were saying, to create our paradise in our lives by what we speak, because the word creates the world. What we think, who we surround ourselves with, what road are we building to our dreams? You know. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I, that's beautiful. What you're, what you're bringing out here, also, and I, I, I've seen it in my own life. I've seen that people who are coming from very, very different backgrounds than myself. I, I some a little bit pride myself on being a bridge guy, a bridge person, and being able to take the the the, the guy that you see dressed as I am and try to bridge myself to people who don't dress or come across at, at all as I am and say, well, there is a place that we can meet in the middle. There, there is a place where we, we can connect. And once you do that, once you try to find the things that connect you as opposed to disconnect you, then the, 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 the conversation is endless. Yes. We have so much to talk about with people. We have, I think I was telling you at a previous time that I, when I was in Hawaii for three years, we had like a, there was like a, a lot of the Jewish people who I wanted to connect with out in Hawaii were are sort of like hiding out in the rainforest over there. So we were able to, how do we bring them out? We, we brought out two, a kapuna and a kahuna, the two elderly ladies who were like the spiritual teacher and sort of priest or healer of, of, of the island over there. Wow. And we had this, this forum where I was in the middle, they were on both sides of me, and we had this public forum we, we talked for three hours at a time like three years in a row about what you what's the what, what do we have in common between hawaiian heritage and jewish mystical heritage and the conversation was was beautiful and we talked about reincarnation we talked about the the how the land is alive and we talked about being how you connect with people in a beautiful way and You'd be amazed at how much we have in common with people as opposed to how much we don't have in common with people if, we, if you go in that direction, basically. Oh, man, it's inspiring. It is truly inspiring. And that is how I aim to live my life, whether it is from a Hindu, Buddhist, Hawaiian, Kapuna, Kapuna, Muslim, uh, Christian, Catholic, Jewish perspective, these inspirational stories, Greek myths. Anything I want to at this point in my life, I'm I'm just wanting to talk about anything holy and inspiring and spiritual and interesting. It's like if, uh -huh. if one more person brings up the news or who I'm for or against, I'm just like, can we? Do you have any stories from your heritage that are cool? <laughs> <laughs> like, can we talk about something inspiring? Can our can we make our lives better through our speech, please, on this beautiful day? You know, it's yeah. so it's so important. And yes, thank you for highlighting that and. 
and teaching people every week to do that. In Jerusalem, might I add, so if, if the rabbi is not in the States, he is in Jerusalem, that is why Skyping with him is of the utmost importance. And um, also, I, you can see, you record all of your MMMs, right? Your ma mythical yeah, we got musical about, meditations. We're on year number three right now, wow. a weekly MMM SoundCloud recording. So you can reach out to me and I can connect you up with all that stuff if you want. It's so beautiful. Well, I would actually love to delve further into, I want to ask you one thing about the spiritual life, etc. What about when people have, I, f I feel like I know the answer, but I want to hear what you have to say. Um, what about when people have blocks? Like, let's say, a block to abundance in the form of money. How do you help people overcome blocks through your wisdom and the Kabbalah teachings and everything, your spiritual coaching? Okay, there, there's a lot of, lot of tools that we use to, to overcome blocks. I think the most important tool... Uh, I think that the, the common denominator of all of these tools, basically, in dealing with blocks is um, to realize that sometimes the blocks are beyond our ability to deal with. And if we are able to know that and let go of the resistance and let go of thinking that it, I'm the one who can always solve the problem, and we sort of like give it over to God and give it over to um to any anybody or anything that that can help, but for me specifically, it's God. Then I think we 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 find ourselves past the problem. You know, I, we my, my most interesting um, little experimental group, and they do a lot of them over here, was this helpless screaming uh, uh, emotional group where we got together. It was about a year and a half. We got together in. The, there's many uh, shelters over here in Jerusalem. We got together in a shelter, and for 45 minutes on the clock, everybody went into a darkened corner of the shelter. They brought out a, a laundry list of all their helpless situations, their blocks they can't get past, and they just started to get emotional and say, I, I tried this and this and this and this and this and this, and I can't do it, I can't do it, and they got very emotional. And they let it go. God, please do it for me. And that particular group, the best group I've ever done, I've ever been a part of in my life. You, when we did that, people's hearts softened. People's prayers got answered. You, it, it was, it was like something that if you didn't do that one week, you felt like you were dry. You felt like something was missing in your life because we're able to like really let it go, which I think is the essence of what prayer is all about, just letting it, really letting it go, that coming to the place of helplessness is the most liberating, freeing thing in the world, and when you, get, when you allow yourself to do that, and you allow yourself to say, I can't do it, but you can do it for me, things happen, things, things get taken care of, oh including your gosh. own sense of well-being, basically. Oh my God, okay, Rabbi, that was so powerful. I was not expecting that. That is so powerful. I am going to do that tonight. It's so true. And it's in every single ism and walk of life. Let go and let God. And, yeah, and when we're trying to steer the ship, it's like get out of God's way. When you realize you have no control. I mean, we do. We have self. We have free will. But when we realize we're really not the captains of the ship, for the ultimate life. If you want the right. best life ever, if you want to get back to the garden, you've got to let a power greater than yourself drive the ship. Drive so, the ship, yeah. God, yeah, that's absolutely. so beautiful. And and it's, it reminds me of His Bodhidut, which is the, His right. Bodhidut, the concept. It's in Judaism of, of meditation. It's going out into the forest and just screaming and crying to God. It's that release of emotion from such a deep, place of yearning and and hope and helplessness it's also screaming and crying and it's also talking you're the the ones that the ones who practice it the most religiously the, the breast of Hasidim they, they practice right. it for an hour a day every day wow and it's talking to God for a complete hour and I've noticed also in doing it myself at certain times of my life, uh, less so now I'd like to do it more, but other people who, who have, do it all the time, 
they're the best conversationalists I've ever met in my life because they're they're having to talk to God. There's which is you know not a visceral, uh, concrete thing, and because they're talking, they're developing the art of conversation. So mm-hmm. I would recommend that for anybody who is like yourself doing interviews and talking to people or comedians, whoever it might be, you open up this sort of natural flow of conversation. It's great for relationships also. It teaches you how to talk, how to, how to really carry on a, a, the art of conversation in your life, basically. Oh my gosh, that is so amazing. Can you give us a one minute example? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I like, wasn't expecting that. Oh, and, okay. Um, like, dear God, please help me. I'm feeling helpless yeah, about gonna, this. Yeah, I'm going to do it for for this. I'm going to make this real. All right, okay. for a minute here. Okay. All right. So, dear God, we're in a situation now. In the 21st century, 2017, we're skyping long distance. We're bridging time zones, space zones, everything else. We're in we're in a place where we know that. Anytime we even think about you or we talk to you, you're there. We just, where is God found? Where you let him in? So we're letting you in right now. We're bringing you into this sacred space, this, this, uh, uh, by screen Skype call in order for you to come in into places where you're normally not found, where people normally don't let you in. And please open up for us this ability to let you in. This ability to see your hand inside of our lives, inside of our hearts, mesh with our thoughts, speak our words, think our thoughts, feel our feelings, help us walk the walk, do the talk, and help us talk to you and talk to everybody in the most respectful and loving and full of kindness and full of godness way that we possibly can. Amen. Amen. If that was not the best real world example of talk to God every day, I don't know what is. That is so powerful. Wow, thank you so much. Rabbi, you are, you're like a spoken word artist. And you are because I've read your amazing poetry online, your heartfelt, soulful poetry. Everybody go to Rabbi Yitzhak Schwartz's page on Facebook. And what is your other meditation Kabbalah page on, on Facebook? I got, I got this one Facebook page called Yitzchak Schwartz Meditation Video. And just my normal page is just Yitzchak Schwartz, Y-I-T-Z-C-H-A-K Schwartz on Facebook. So well, that, that, it, it has all my poems and everything on there. It's, they're so beautiful. And, and I can tell that you are deeply connected to the higher powers of the universe by your, by your writing and your meditations and your teachings. And that is why you're here. Well, I, I, you know, when I was listening to your prayer, it reminded me of, of what I was talking about before of the, the gossip that I recently experienced. Um, my family went through something really traumatic and every single friend of mine called me under the guise of, oh, I'm calling, are you okay? But really they wanted the juice. They wanted the story. They wanted the gossip. They wanted the details, the drama. And every friend of mine, I ran into a friend of mine who I hadn't seen in years, who was always an inspiration to me. He was raised Jewish. He's now a born again Christian, ironically, but, um, he's always been a soulful, deep connected man. And I ran into him and he said, how are you? And I was like, he's like, you know, I heard about what's happening with your family and I'm so sorry. And he grabbed my hand, my boyfriend's hand and and my my friend's hand who was at the table and he said actually I'd just like to make a prayer right now he didn't ask me what happened he didn't ask me any gossip any drama he just said you know I heard you're going through this I love you I want to offer love and he did exactly what you just did he held all of our hands and he said God please show these people love and strength and protection at this time please protect the children please and he just went on for about a minute or two with the most heartfelt, beautiful, soulful prayer, Tony, I love you. And, and it was just, it shined such a light because these other friends of mine that I'd grown up with, who I called my second family, like spread such horrible, evil, damaging, painful gossip about us. I don't, I, like I said, I, I don't talk to them anymore. I forgive them, but it's not even, you know, worth my human energy at, at this moment, maybe one day, but 
And then this guy comes along and, and, and just prays and offers love and strength and hope. And it changed my life. Truly, it changed my life because I, I felt like all those phone calls I was getting from my friends wanting to know the gossip and what happened and analyzing why. Like, oh, maybe it was this from your childhood. Maybe it was this from your upbringing and this from your culture. And maybe it was this. And everybody just wanted to psychoanalyze and know the drama. And this guy was like, wait a second. You're human. You're hurting. I, I'm going to offer love. And it, it was so profound. And it, it really, truly changed my life. Because I think for you know, a while. <laughs> I'm 40. For most of my life, I've been indoctrinated into the, you know, we talk about what happened and the drama and the gossip. And it's like, no, just offer love and support. So that experience made me want to be a more loving, compassionate, supportive person to those in need and just to everyone. Because it's like, I don't need to know the drama. I don't need to know the story. I need to be a source of strength and love and support. That's so beautiful. That's such a beautiful story. I mean, it's it's basically, it's all sort of encapsulated in a nutshell, in an idea. That is, it's a very, very simple but profound idea again. And that is to love your neighbor like yourself. That's what it says in the Torah. It's what it says in the Bible. That means that I, Yitzhak Schwartz, step out of my shoes and I, I pro we probably don't wear the same size shoes, but I would step into your you adjusted might. shoes, and which would, may may look a little strange for me, but that's okay. And <laughs> I and I would look at things the way you look at things, not the way I look at how you should look at things. And when I do that, it's pure compassion, it's pure love, it's pure strengthening you and empowering you and helping you. As opposed to like what you're saying, the psychoanalysis and the judgment and the the thinking bad and just all of that, because I'm stepping out of me and stepping into you, and it's it's very simple, but it's it it you know it's a challenge. It's a huge challenge in life with people and relationships at all. Tell me about it. It takes practice. Well, I'll quote Will Smith at this juncture. Throughout life, people will make you mad, disrespect you, and treat you bad. Let God deal with the things they do, because hate in your heart will consume you, too. All right. All right. <laughs> tell, tell, tell it to me. Tell it to me. That's beautiful. Will Smith, baby. Will Smith All and right. Rev Yitzhak. you got to combine forces. It's so I'm, true. I'm, I'm up for it. I'm up for it. I'm, I'm going to make a trip to Hollywood, I think, and, oh, and go hook up with some of the big stars over there. You just, have to. Oh, well, Who knows, you know? well, you know, one of my biggest inspirations is Madonna, who in, in the way that she has always, always stood her ground and always been strong and always said, I don't care what people think. Maybe she doesn't do, you know, her self-expression in maybe the most kosher ways sometimes, but she always owns it. She's unapologetic and she's like, this is me. This is how I express myself and um, haters going to hate. You know, yeah, I, and I, yeah. I think other artists do it for, you know, well, obviously she does it for shock value too, but I don't know because their managers tell them what to do or because they think it's going to gain money or whatever, but there's just something different about Madonna, Esther, if you will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I hear that and I see that. I think, I, I don't know if we want to take the discussion in this direction, but I think being a celebrity in general is a huge challenge and dealing with fame automatically places a distance between you and normal so to speak people out there and you have to make like this extra effort to be good and altruistic and normal and loving and everything else and i think it's a real refining process for for a lot of people some people fall down you know, on, on the way to doing that and, and, and can't deal with it. But I think it's it's a real kind of purifying uh, place for a lot of these for, for celebrities to go through and, they, and they're able to get in touch with themselves and other people in a, in a much more profound way. Uh, I yes. I mean, I wouldn't know firsthand, but, well, you know, I, don't I, know I, either. I, I mean, <laughs> I am a public figure and I do, I have done stand-up for years and I have, you know, I have online shows and I've been recognized and it is a weird feeling because it's like, you know what, I'm just doing what I'm called to do and it happens to be in the public eye. I'm just, you know, no one, well, maybe people do notice some lawyers, but I, I always think of that. I'm like, no one's going up to a banker or a lawyer or a venture capitalist and saying, 
oh my god, like starstruck. But maybe they are. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> they're mo more so, they're like, you screwed me over. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah, it's more like that. <laughs> I guess that's the power of art, I think, that, that yeah. what celebrities do for the most part is art, and they express the human experience, which is another reason I think which really, I think really refines and purifies them in a lot of ways. Wow. So, wow. That's such an and, interesting way yeah. to look at it. No, it does. I think that's what art art sort of is art art does with people any kind of art whether it's you know motion pictures or whether it's music or whether it's poetry or whether it's being a stand-up comedian or whether it's what whatever you're putting out there you're trying to represent the human experience you have you have a special sensitivity and the, and the, and the more the more uh, keen you are with that sensitivity the the, the, the more profound influence you're going to have on other people as well oh that is so beautiful. That is so beautiful. It's true. I mean, that's why we resonate with some and not others. A different, yeah. different frequencies. Like I think when I was younger, more superficial, maybe, and just not as deeply focused, I resonated with hip hop and you know just more superficial artists, even art, even painting art. But now that I'm open and more connecting every day with the higher powers of the universe, and I feel like I resonate with deeper artists who have deeper things to say, you know? I mean, every artist has a deep something to say, hopefully, but it's in the eye of the beholder, we know. It's in the eye of the beholder, but you as an artist that you are, and I'm, I'm sure a fantastic artist, yeah. are somebody who you can do, you do what you do because you can step in their shoes, because you can step in their in their place and actually feel what they feel and, and represent that. that. That's really very special. Well, actually, that brings me to another thought. Since we have a few more minutes, that okay. whole concept of looking for validation from outside of ourselves, because I, as an artist in the early part of my life, before I embraced what Madonna stands for, um, did look for validation from outside of myself, and I got a lot of criticism, and it really affected my self-esteem and self-confidence. How do artists and every human overcome looking outside of ourselves for our worth? I think that's a great question, a fantastic question. I, what I've learned over the years, I spent a lot of time in the books um, for, for many, many years now, and, and as, as well as today as well. What I've found, I think the greatest of our sages um, have taught that it, it, in so many areas of life, if you um, don't chase people, they will chase you. That is true by money, that's true by honor, that's true by success, that's true with any aspect of life. When, when If you're chasing them for validation, what's going to happen is that they're going to sense that you're needy, that you're chasing, that you, and they're going to be turned off, they're going to be put off in, in some kind of a way. But when you are not chasing them, but you're, you are going inside and finding your essence and making that blossom and making as much of your allness blossom as much as possible, I can guarantee you from experience, they're going to chase you. People oh. are going to chase you. Relationships are going to chase you. Money is going to chase you. All good things in the world are going to chase you. So your validation from other people is something that's going to sort of hold you back more than it's going to actually... Uh, get you for it. In the end, ironically, when you're going to get the validation by not seeking the validation. That's that's what my experience has shown, basically. Truth, sage, wisdom, yes. That is so <laughs> profound. And I see it every day at the dog park because my dog just minds her own business and is so self-content wanting to just chase squirrels and not interact with other dogs. And all the dogs chase her. She is doing her own thing in her own power and wanting example. to just chill by herself in the woods and the dogs seek her out, sniff her out and chase her. But she loves being chased. I, I mean, maybe she's like designed it that way because she loves being chased. But <laughs> the I, mean, I don't know learn. your dog personally, but uh, I, I would imagine that your dog is, is for real. I think your dog is, 
not seeking the chasing, and that's that's what, and the other dogs sense that a mile away, and they're they're chasing it for that for that reason. Oh my gosh, she's for real. That's so <laughs> Rabbi. That's awesome. That's so awesome. I'm like, wait, I've seen that in in action every day. Oh my gosh, it's hilarious. Gosh, that's so profound. It's so amazing. Yeah, there just came a time where I all the teachings that I've studied from so many walks of life and spiritual learning. I finally just came to realize, uh, you know, whoever there's an audience for everyone. I, I used to I used to stop myself from performing and stop myself from putting out great inspiring media because I was like, oh, I don't have the technology that so and so does, and I don't have the years under my belt that so and so does, and I don't have the you know Will Ferrell quick wit or whatever. But I have my, me and my calling, and there's an audience for me. There's an audience Absolutely. for everyone. Like, oh, I'm too many pounds overweight, so I can't be on camera. Whatever. Like, there's an audience for everyone. Just go with it. Do what's in your heart. Manifest your dreams. What do you have to say I about think... people bringing out? Sorry, what were you going to say? I interrupted. No, no, no. I'm just I'm responding to what you're saying. I'm agreeing with what you're saying. I think those bubbles are being burst all over the place nowadays that you're where I'm not skinny enough, I'm not pretty enough, I'm not handsome enough, I'm not smart enough, I'm not confident enough. Not true, not true. The people that are making it nowadays, they're making it because they are going inside and being themselves as much as they possibly can. And there are, that's just, that is the anatomy and physiology of, of the spiritual world, that there are other people who are connected to you. They're just waiting for you to be you, and then they're going to come chasing, chasing after you. So you don't have to worry about finding them or, or even putting out yourself to, you know, to, to impress them or anything else. Just be you. They're, they'll, they'll come chasing after you. No, no question about it. Oh, that's so beautiful. And that reminds <laughs> me of one of my favorite quotes, and I'm sure, again, that it was reworded from some ancient text, but it's uh, Howard Thurston, Thurman, who says, what the world needs, don't ask what the world needs. Ask what makes you come alive and go do it. Because what the world uh, needs is people who have come alive. Absolutely. And, and people who are authentically themselves because your vibe attracts your tribe. So you your want vibe to, attracts your tribe. i got to remember that. i have to write that. Your vibe that's attracts your, your tribe. Your that's vibe. my mantra. Okay, that, that's it's worth true. Your it's vibe. so true. Because it's where I've been in so many places, I've lived in so many places and traveled to so many places, and I've always said, even from birth, I, that I never fit in. And I even did my TED Talk about it. My TED Talk is about uniquely standing out. Instead, looking at yourself as uniquely standing out instead of not fitting in. And I've always felt that way in my life. Like, where's my tribe? And I've just recently come to realize, wait, everywhere I've been, whatever vibe I was at, I've attracted those people. So I'm just going to create my tribe wherever I go. I'm going to create my village. And the more authentic I become, the more amazing, magical people I attract where we can speak about ancient wisdom and talk about uplifting stories and not buy into gossip and current events that are just fake news stories and downers. So, yeah, like I'm I, that what you say is so true when we become ourselves the right people will be attracted to us. They'll, they'll naturally come to us. I'll share with you a very a very short one here. And that yes. is that amongst the many beautiful, amazing, interesting, fascinating people I've been blessed to hang out with in different stages of my life, one man, he was an entrepreneur, very successful entrepreneur. And I, he, we connected because he likes sort of the creative side of me, as opposed to the practical business, which I, I did not have on me. But he, he said, okay, it's hot. You're, you're, you have this and this, this, but you're all over the place. Like who, he asked me the question, who Yitzhak is your target audience? And I thought about that really deeply for a minute. And then the, I had this eureka moment. And the answer that came to me was, Yitzhak Schwartz's target audience is Yitzhak Schwartz. And I then, that changed my life. That realization changed my life. And so all the stuff I'm putting out there in the world is because I groove on it, because I dig it, because I paradise on it, because I love doing that stuff. And because the more that I groove and dig on it, 
the people who are my target audience are going to come out of the woodwork and come and connect with me. That's that's the story of uh, that's how I uh, that that's a little quip I think that illustrates that idea a lot. I think. Yeehaw! To get back <laughs> to your cowboy days, yeehaw! Oh, that is so true. It's so beautiful that I am that I am. I am, I am, I am. Right, I am that I am. Absolutely. It's that is a very powerful life transforming moment. I hope I've come to that. Maybe if I have to say that I haven't yet. I'm really it's so funny that you brought that up because I was just recently asked by a producer who is your target demographic. Your and, target I, audience. and I said everyone. So what does that mean about me? I'm way oh, out there. Good. I know. I need to laser focus it back in. But it's true. Yeah. And, and you know what? It is true. I am my own target audience because I base every person I want to interview on who would I want to watch and what do I need to learn and who do I need to learn from. These videos are just my own little diary and I need to click on them when I need the guidance that each of these people that I'm interviewing, specifically you, um, you know, are, are doling out. So it's like my own little um, life coaching series for myself and whoever vibrates at my same frequency will appreciate it and and get uplifted from it too so yeah first of all i'm i'm jealous of, of this format that you're doing here and interviewing people i think it's a fantastically beautiful idea Thank you. and i love what you just said right now also the fact that you you're inter these are these are just extensions of myself basically and if you look at it that way it's 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 just going to propagate it's going to be it's going to it's going to reproduce itself in, into amazing proportions and i bless you with that and um and i bless you with the, the greatest success in in empowering other people because that empowerment is going to come right right back at you no no question about it they're going to be extensions of yourself and 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 all of your creativity should go out there and light up other people which automatically in a mirror like fashion is gonna light lights you up right right back at you. Rabbi, thank you. My pleasure. My what, pleasure. Thank you. Thank what a you beautiful for this, for blessing. The opportunity. Oh my gosh, my pleasure. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful to have been blessed by your beautiful heart and inspired soul. Thank you for inspiring so many, especially so many people I love and care about and helping us all transform to be the best people we can be and to be it living in the garden once again. Do you have any last words for the ethers, for the masses, for our kindred mirrors out there? Let me share one fast poem with you, yes, all right? Please, a, please. A real fast one here. This, this one's called Constantly Becoming. Take your time. Be free. Be the one who stands up and lets the anxieties fall away from you like the dew melting away in the morning sun. Be free. Show them all what you're made of, a lovely testimony to your invincibility, allowing your difficulty to sink into obscurity like the sunset sinking into a majestic evening. Be free. Illuminate the darkness with the colors of dawn, with the determination to move on in the struggles that you face that only light up the way for all of us to follow, if we dare, if we can share your breathtaking vision of the glistening light at the end of the endless night. Be free, show us a new way of seeing, a new way of being where all the dilemmas and chaos and disorder and discord all prove themselves to be a thing of the past, a fleeting impression that does not last, swallowed up in the relentless melody of a holy soul constantly becoming constantly arriving constantly birthing oh amen that amen. was so beautiful thank you rabbi i'm you wrote that that's one of mine yeah oh my gosh thank you so much i know where i'm going to be rewinding this video plenty of times in every <laughs> spot thank but you. that is so beautiful. Thank you so so much. I so appreciate you. I really I, do. I appreciate your your giving me this chance, and I appreciate your reaching out, and I appreciate meeting you. You're an amazing, amazing human being. Thank you, Rabbi. Amen. I can't wait to experience in person in Jerusalem your MMMs, mystical musical meditations. If you happen to be in the Holy Land, seek out Rabbi Yitzhak Schwartz. Attend one of his mystical musical meditations. I've only attended them online in cyberspace, but I can tell you even in cyberspace, 
They have transformed me, inspired my soul, uplifted me. And it, it, they're just so beautiful and powerful. And what he brings down will truly resonate with you as a human and a seeker and a spiritually progressive soul. So thank you, Rabbi. I'm going to put the links in this video where people can find you. And please reach out. He has many, many more words of wisdom and sage teachings to share every week, every day. Holler at the Rab. Holler at Reb Yitzhak. <laughs> thank You're you very, so very much, Debbie. I appreciate thank it. Thank you so much. Please, um, blessings to you on your journey on your yellow brick road and red carpet, and we will meet in the flesh very soon in Jerusalem. Absolutely. God I'm willing. Sure I'm sure of it. Real soon. Real soon. Thank you so much, Rabbi. Amen. Okay. Talk to you soon. Be well. Thank you for everything. Shalom. All the best. Be blessed. All the best to you. Take care. You too.